Let's talk about things that are bubbly, but a little more terrifying if popped off. Which <laughs> if popped off, and, okay. Which is her card. <laughs> I think you just took my title for the greatest pun in all of our episodes <laughs> so far. That was really good. I did it! <laughs> Welcome! <laughs> Welcome to Casual Routine episode 30. I'm your host, Ryan, here with your other host, Hatch. <laughs> We take so much pride in our opening, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> They'll have no idea no. what is going on. They're like, wait, did I miss part of the episode? And it's like, just started. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're back. Finally, we're back. Listen, the holidays are over, which means we're back to work. We're in the office. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, got. I had to put on my Sunday best, make sure that... <laughs> Make sure I got me here on time. And oh boy, let me tell you, I got so many dagnab emails to go through. Right? <laughs> I got a bad case of the Mondays. Can't wait to get your lunch. I'm telling you. <laughs> You're really selling it here. <laughs> bad case of the Mondays. We're back, man. H- housekeeping. You know where you can listen to us everywhere. And <laughs> follow us on Twitter. Keep up to date on episodes. That's at Podcast Corp. And you can send emails to the same thing at gmail.com. Please leave a like, follow, and short review slash comment. And tell a friend to let their am- imagination run wild. I wrote the wrong thing. <laughs> We're back! We're back! We're back! We're back and I'm done. <laughs> let their imagination run wild and have some fun with the Casuals of Terror podcast. <laughs> All right, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it, perfect. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. The so I actually played this time. The funny thing is, Hedge did it, but <laughs> Man, we don't, swapped don't roles do that to here. Me. Don't do we that to me. Roles. I, I, ironically, from our last episode, he influenced me. I played Scargrounds. It's amazing um, because I finally got to play Vlad Riven. Riven is a car. So we talked about Riven in our last episode, episode twenty nine. Um, so check that one out. Not twenty nine point one. That's just patch stuff, but. Um, we talked about Riven and the card is fun. It's fun in a lot of archetypes and I got to play around a couple of those. And then the Vlad one was the one that stuck with me because we've been talking about how much we liked Vlad in the past and our past episodes and try to make it work. It's a kind of a weak card on its own. Um, so to have a deck that's actually pretty solid, especially when you're just grinding ladder in the short amount of time you have between wow raids, uh, <laughs> playing that with Ember Maiden, uh, Maiden, so good. So good. Yeah, I, I, I love the interaction between like Scargrounds and Ember Maiden. It's mm-hmm. like that's if you get those two cards on the field at the same time, you really do feel like you just got the god hand. Yeah. And like even if a deck isn't powerful, if you ever have that kind of hand where it's just like I I love this hand, like that yeah. feeling of not having to mulligan, it just feels good. Even if you don't win that game, it's like, nah, <laughs> that was like you, you walk away from that one going, uh, I there's no way I could win because I had the god hand. And, <laughs> That just means I lost. It's it feels good, but yeah, like even even though I because I took like basically this whole week off. I was yeah. hanging out with uh, some family, so I had a good week. But I um like the little bit that I would would go in and make sure to get like my dailies in was playing. Uh, well, I'm doing Vlad Brom. Yeah. Um, but I'm you got to send me your ribbon list. Like that yeah, sounds definitely. like a lot of fun. Yeah, my list I took from uh, Jeff Hoagland. Uh, he's been playing a good bit. He liked it a good bit. So I was like, all right, cool. You know, I'm a part. Of, I follow him on Twitch, subbed. Uh, I used to watch him a lot during the Magic days. So I trust his. He's, his. Uh, yeah, his I, words, I would so. trust him. He's way smarter than my smooth brain. <laughs> so I, I definitely am looking forward to that list. That. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to that list. But that takes us to our main topic for this week, which is super califragilistic Acealidocious. Uh, oh, he said it. <laughs> I said it. I said I didn't mess up. I did it, Mom. <laughs> Are you winning, son? <laughs> Are you winning, son? <laughs> but Zoe, we're talking about Zoe this week. So some good old-fashioned, fun, uh, childlike wonderment. Uh, and we're going to start off with what children like to do best is steal things. <laughs> Stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> 
understand like, that we've set our stance on children immediately. We now, Angel's yeah, Room Terra is anti-children. You know what them kids like to do? Steal. Steal. <laughs> so Spell Thief is a great card. It's a one cost uh, burst spell that says pick one of three enemy spells played this game and create a copy in hand. So first of all, the quote's amazing as well because it, it kind of embodies her her sporadic personality, which is, oh, that was uh, amazing, but how much better would it be if I did it instead? Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> it's so good. But no, this card is very strong uh, and it's super flexible because the case here is at, at the foundation when you're playing on ladder, especially this little ranked, usually people are playing good decks, right? So good decks play good cards. So this has a high chance of stealing good cards, right? And you're only paying one more for it. So it also kind of, if, you're, if your opponent knows you're playing Zoe, uh, they play around this as well. So it could mess up their um, ordering so that they have to play around it, so that you get more benefit. There are certain cards in the game that just work um, perfectly. There are a few cards in Rune Terra that are very like one lane. And especially if they're one lane, most people don't play them. So you have a low chance of getting those cards as well. So all, all around, you can't really beat this as like a one or two of uh, in any deck that's playing Zoe. Yeah, and not to mention that it is uh, showing um, the continuation of what we saw from a lot of the KDA cards, which mm -hmm. is an animation when you first play it. So oh, yeah. I love the fact that they added that to it. So it, to me, this is like one of the best cards in the game because I just want to see that that animation <laughs> of just reaching out through a portal. Yeah. Like, okay, thank you. And <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, it's fun. I like yeah. the, any little thing that's going to be fun is something that I want to try out. Yeah, I do enjoy Zoe's addition. I was kind of hesitant because she is one of the newest characters when you look at the grand scheme of things uh, for League. Um, but she was very liked when she came out. And even as a card, you know, the, the hardcore players like her. As a casual, everybody likes her. So I'm, I'm happy they nailed it here. Uh, so this takes us to the next thing children do. Uh, which is trick you, uh, the trickster. Anti children, casuals room terror. <laughs> trick or treat. LLC. <laughs> LLC. <laughs> uh. So the trickster here is you know nothing really special. It's it's a part of the celestial types, which they all have their specific keyword that they're built around. Um, so for this one, it's a three cost three three, so it's evenly statted, and it has loof, elusive, uh, elusive. Uh, so it can only be blocked by other elusive creatures. Uh, you stick this thing. Usually people don't pick it as much versus the other choices uh, because the other choices allow you to control the board more um, where this one just goes over everything. But when people do pick it and they stick it and they throw buffs on it or whatever, it's very annoying to get rid of a uh, three toughness elusive card. Yeah, and uh, it I do <clears> like <throat> that you pick this one to talk about because it is it, it gives an opening to talk about an important thing, which is the fact that it's part of the celestial tree and so anyone who's not familiar um celestial is going to be something that happens when you invoke which mm -hmm. is a for the moment mostly just a targon <laughs> mechanic and invoke is very similar to discover from hearthstone so like you have to invoke to even get <laughs> access to the celestial cards mm -hmm. and that's very important when we get to around to talking about the zoe card like it's it, well, there, it's a fun. It's also the fun RNG element. It's not yeah. the toxic kind of like, yes. let me just steal your deck and not just <laughs> copy it. I'm just gonna take it and play it. Yeah. So then you have to play two decks with no deck. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's That's not a like great that. way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> not like that, but it is a and, fun RNG. Yeah, element. and and yet another great quote here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into this one right here. So. So there I was going about my day when in struts this feller packed to the gills with gold. Easy mark, eh? I sidle over, amp up the charm, and amp up the price. It's only when I put my coins away I realized that little scamp paid me with my own money. The trickster was shining bright that night. I tell you what. <laughs> Your little drifter. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we still friends? Why are we still friends? 
<laughs> no, that um, one was a fun one. Hey, yeah, dude, these cards are just great. They're good fun. Yeah. So tell us about the the madam herself. Yeah, let's let's talk about a different little trickster here. So, <laughs> um, so the first thing to really dive into is just the title because Zoe is the aspect of twilight in which we've yep. we've talked about aspects here before and it gives it really dives down into like the heart of the land of runeterra um but zoe is not like any other aspect because zoe is very much carefree and adventurous to an absolute fault mm-hmm. um so when we're as far as with zoe she was a young girl as growing up in the Targon region, very close to the Mount, to Mount Targon. And she was studying with the, the Rakor, which was going to be like the clan that actually is worshiping the Celestials. <laughs> and from the very beginning, she showed very, very little interest in studying with the Rakor to do something in, in quotes here, less boring. <laughs> and if you've heard any of Zoe's voice lines or if you've seen any art about her, you get the entire tone that you need about less boring. Mm-hmm. Um, and the story of her becoming the aspect really starts as far as her running away from one of her lessons to go run around town and be a kid. Mm-hmm. And at the time, the aspect of Twilight is watching from on high having fun just enjoying this little kid terrorizing all of these priests and <laughs> scholars by causing chaos throughout the town because she was bored and when she finally gets cornered in this you know field day of having fun out there the aspect mm-hmm. decides to open a portal to reveal six items mm-hmm. five of these items were things that could help her get out of the situation and diffuse the the priests and their anger. So, you know, she had gave her money, gave her mm-hmm. books. Like there was five different items there, um, uh, or uh, the the two that are really pointed out are the devotion rug and a silk yeah. rope. So like <laughs> yeah. something to show that you're here to study and something to just let you straight up escape. Yeah. But the sixth item that was there was just a kickball. <laughs> and Zoe chose the kickball. And while cornered by yeah. this angry priest, she literally just starts playing kickball with herself. And it's just like, yeah, awesome. And I, the I kinda, ask- part, part of me kind of wants it to be like a ball in a cup type situation. <laughs> just, ball- <laughs> it's just like a ball in a cup. <laughs> Oh, oh no, the ball fell out of the cup. But it's okay because there's a string attached to the ball that's attached to the cup. <laughs> ball in the cup. Ball in the cup. <laughs> All right, so she chooses okay. the ball in the cup. Yeah. She chooses the ball in the cup and she starts having fun with her ball in the cup. Mm-hmm. But either way, she picks a toy. She doesn't try to defuse the situation at all. She's just here to play. Yeah. And that is when the aspect of Twilight ends up opening a portal right next to Zoe, which she just goes, cool, and jumps in. (laughs) And then she merges with the aspect, becoming the new aspect. And then her story picks up with her returning to Runeterra as a teenager Mm -hmm. while still very much being Zoe. And she looks around and she's like, oh, this isn't the same place anymore. And at that point, it's like a millennia had passed. (laughs) But Zoe doesn't even know that. She just knows that, hey, this is a lot's changed whatever what's happened and since she's the aspect of twilight she's learned to take control over these portals so she Mm -hmm. can cause these little ripples in time to kind of put pieces together so she does it just because she's curious and um so what she ends up going through is like some of the wars that crossed over runeterra she Mm -hmm. gets to see um the ruination and the cataclysm of the blessed isles and um but I'm going to tell you just what she says that she sees in her ripple of time, <laughs> which is she sees the big armored meanie, the spooky ghost party, yeah. war for sparkly rocks, and the new nation that was born near the no fun forest. <laughs> This is that is Zoe's catch up of what happened in the last millennia. <laughs> the and cliff notes, the the cliff note version, and so then Zoe ends up 
going through these ripples of time and mm. she also learns that there are other aspects other than herself so she does what any other curious aspect that is new to their powers would do and terrorizes them um, <laughs> because they're also no fun yeah and when she gets bored because they won't play with her she ends up opening a portal and going into the celestial plane and finding Aurelian's soul. <laughs> All right. Now, again, let's put this in perspective. This is a, a kid that has grown up in Targon that ends up becoming an aspect. <laughs> let's let's recap real quick. And if you have not listened to our Aurelian Soul episode, give yeah. that a quick listen because Aurelian Soul is is very much a serious being. <laughs> An Aurelian soul, a chess master of sorts. Aurelian soul is unhappy with all of Runeterra, specifically Targon. <laughs> so then, the an aspect <laughs> from Targon appears next to him, and before he can blink and destroy this hated creature of his, Zoe goes. Cool, space doggy. I love you, space doggy. <laughs> and, and all that we know as far as this relationship is that Aurelian oh. Soul, without like really wanting to, kind of reveals like how these portals and celestial powers work, which is what Zoe is using because she's the aspect of Twilight. He reveals these things just because this annoying kid won't leave him alone. And now this annoying kid has gone, I love this space doggy. I'm going to protect this space doggy. <laughs> Learns that the space doggy's on a leash, specifically a <laughs> crown that has been placed on him. And she's like, I will get rid of this crown because space doggy needs to be free. Yeah. And... All that we know about Aurelian Soul is that he hates Zoe, but now he's no longer promised to destroy Zoe when he gains freedom. <laughs> and that's kind of where her story ends. Like it's like yeah. her story is just equally as fun and bubbly as her personality. Yeah. And let's talk about things that are bubbly but a little more terrifying if popped off, which <laughs> it popped off, and, okay. which is her card. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just took my title for the greatest pun in all of our episodes <laughs> so far. That was really good. I did it. <laughs> Slow clap. Did. I've learned Slow from clap. the best. <laughs> um, so uh, her card is really cool. Um, and by really cool, I'm going to just say the most boring part about it, and that makes it like, why are you even talking about this card then? Uh, it's a one mana, one one. As like that already sounds as vanilla as you can get, uh, but a one mana, one one with elusive, yeah. and nexus strike so when she makes contact with the nexus create a super cool star chart in hand if you have one or or if you have one reduce its cost by one mm -hmm. so uh, already card generation and value there and the super cool star chart is a two mana burst spell that lets you invoke a celestial card between one and three mana um and her level up is I I have seen you play ten cards with different names, um, and before we go with the level up card, uh, this card was talked about a ton when they made the Zoe announcement and before we got to play it because a lot of people were saying that you you would never play this card because it's never going to survive on the board, and it, she has to survive on the board to level up because she has to see you play ten different mm -hmm. cards, um, and. At this point of playing, getting to play with Zoe for a little less than a month now, uh, a lot of people tell you that Zoe is like a threat that you do have to deal with and that is not the easiest to deal with. And so a lot of people have played with her more than what anyone was expecting. And part of that is because of how much fun this level up is, which is she becomes a 2-2 with elusive. For the rest of the game, when you summon an ally, grant its keywords to all allies. Um, and now her Nexus Strike is in turn becomes a Behold the Infinite instead of the super cool star chart. And Behold the Infinite is a... Um, it's just two mana invoke and so it doesn't have the mana restriction anymore yeah um yeah like her level up is like 
it's so cool one like there's literally nothing like it outside of yeah. um give it all in the kda set which mm-hmm. is an eight mana slow spell <laughs> And now you just get it as you just basically get it as a free landmark without taking your space if you get the Zoe flip. Um, So, like, I think, like, people underestimated just how much card players want to try to get these big effects off. Like, there's everyone out there, like, uh, has to battle within themselves between being competitive and wanting to be the mayor of Value Town. Exactly. Um, and, And so I think that that underestimation of card players is why we get to see so much zoe but then like like if you if you've gotten this off even once yeah like you're just chasing it again like this is this chasing that high this is the drugs of card games right here (laughs) so one thing it it definitely introduces which is the first time we've really gotten this push in this direction because we've seen mill decks um we've seen other forms of alternate win conditions but the style of deck this brings is Highlander decks. So the concept of a Highlander deck for most card games is a deck that usually plays like one of each card in it. So if you have 30 cards, usually 30 of those cards are different. It doesn't push because of the way Runeterra is designed. It doesn't really push that completely. But the idea is still there where you want to explore different cards when you get the ability to choose a card of your opponent's hand because you're playing um, Spell Thief you're going to want to choose a spell you didn't pick before, right? That factors into this whole concept of not so much randomness, uh, but proper decision-making on a grander scale because you're dealing with more cards. Right, and it also increases the amount of flexibility that you have as a Highlander player when you're looking at the celestial cards or cards that have been invoked Mm -hmm. because that even gives you a larger pool to work with than what the pool that you've already built around, which... Because if you're trying to build around leveling up Zoe, mm-hmm. like you're you're gonna have a bigger card pool than the average deck that is trying to condense the cards that they want mm-hmm. to make it more likely percentage wise that they're gonna draw the card that they want when they want to draw it. Yeah. Um. So it's, and this is also a thing that it's like was very exciting to see before even before we got to play the card because of cards like the per, the Pursuit of Perfection um, and the other little Highlander cards that we've gotten before this. Now, this is like the flagship champion other than Heimerdinger because before Heimerdinger was like the flagship to that archetype. So it's I'm really glad to see that they're also making the effect really powerful because mm-hmm. Highlander decks in other card games happen because it's a budget-friendly thing. Mm-hmm. And as we have discussed on the show before, Rune Terra is by far the most budget-friendly game because they Great really point. reward you for just playing. Uh, a lot of games, you can say that, and it, none of them compare to how Rune Terra rewards you. So if you are rewarded for playing, you don't need to be aggressively budget. Yeah. So how do you reward a Highlander deck, which was the reward for being a budget player? And you need an effect like this. Yep. So I, it's the the card itself is just like it, it kind of fits the niche that Rune Terra needed it to fit yeah. in the most unique way because of how Rune Terra plays. Yep. Well said. Well said. Uh, couldn't say it better myself. But what I can say better Thank you. myself Thank you. is uh. The question for this episode. So, oh, no. as always, I present Hetch with a question. Uh, sometimes, I forgot. you know, it's a riddle. Sometimes it's something else. But this time, it's pretty straightforward. It's usually related to the topic. And it's going to be what was and could still be your favorite toy as a child. I let my guard down. <laughs> I'll go first, as always, because I'm gracious. Uh, mine was my two foot Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michelangelo toy. I still have it. It's the only toy I still have from my childhood. It's on my desk at work. 
uh, and it, everybody sees it and they're like, yeah, they use it as a landmark too. So whenever they're telling people where to go to someone else's desk, they say, okay, find the Michelangelo. It's two feet. You can't miss it. And then try to find, they make up, take a left at the bathroom. So that one's been, I remember Dang. when I was younger, I had a bunch of toys. I was a big, I was a big action figure kid. And but my family was big about, you know, donating after you get a certain age. So we packed them all up shipped them off uh, to Jamaica to some family and my mom told me I could pick a couple to keep and that was the one I held on that in my Space Jam Michael Jordan <laughs> that one though I got yes! rid of but, but the Michelangelo is my favorite oh man uh, favorite toy this one is super tough <laughs> um, I, oh man I like this. This is one of the first ones that I actually kind of feel. Were you a toy on. kid? Like, did, were, were you like oh. action figures or okay? Oh, I Trucks was. Or... That's the problem. Hot Wheels. Oh, um, that's the problem. The the the, the, the was sample size is yeah. too large. Th that's the problem. Um, I think like if I have to be honest, um, because don't you lie to our don't you lie to our yeah, listeners? Like, cause <laughs> I, like I was also I was also brought into the video game fold very mm -hmm. very young. So, like, if I'm talking about, like, my favorite things to play with as a kid, it, it mm -hmm. would be a video game thing. Okay, I had, that works. Because uh, uh, my first console was a, an NES uh, that I that my dad got when I was about, like, two years old. Mm -hmm. So some of my earliest memories were playing on the NES. Uh, so I think, like, if I have to pick a favorite, though, and I still, I still have, like, my NES and stuff, but my favorite mm -hmm. was my very first playstation okay um so the playstation one i uh, my little niece because if anyone that has a that likes to play video games and mm. is around kids well, the first thing that you learn is that you have to have a dummy controller yeah um <laughs> yeah and I, I learned this really early on with younger cousins. So my dummy controller for my niece is a PS1 controller before they had the analog sticks. Yeah. Like I still got those. And so now like that's what my, my little niece plays with to be, like, to be like, okay, here, go, go to the side, go to the side. Go so, to the side. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I gotta be the loser and say something video game related. No, that, I think I think that that still sticks. You know, we're not here to try to start an argument. Is video games toys like that's not? But <laughs> it I think at that age it definitely factored in. It was part of it, right? You play the action figures and then you hop on the N sixty four or whatever and play. But you still saw it as playtime, which is you know it fits the concept here yeah. perfectly. So I think it works. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't have a cool Michelangelo. Yeah. Like I kind of I'm kind of jealous about that as far as like a two foot size one i know I like, I, it, it was yeah i got it right after the first movie came uh, second movie sorry the second movie came out um the live action one which uh, was the good move the good live action movies yep. which is something that is an oxymoron to say in our current <laughs> day and age i there's, Too true. there's gonna be a younger audience that hears that and goes live action oh movies yeah i can't forgot be good <laughs> And it's like they can be. We so had we them. them. We, we had them. them. We gave them the title. They now have to go look up because they probably never seen Mary Poppins, and now they have to go look at the original Ninja Turtles stuff. We're I, sorry. We're I, old. All right. See, see, you, you now you ruined it because you actually said it's like they have to look up the title because they haven't seen Mary Poppins. Oh So no. now there's going to be people that don't look it up. Is like, oh wait, Mary Poppins? Yeah, that was um from the uh the uh the marvel movie uh this, <laughs> excuse me, that was for we'll the fix it in post. we'll fix it in post that was for the guardians of the galaxy too right yeah, yeah mary poppins i'm mary poppins y'all <laughs> i'm mary poppins y'all <laughs> you ruined it <laughs> and with that thanks for listening and we'll be back soon with the next episode take care everybody <laughs>